In this video, we're going to take a look at how to solve density problems using unit multipliers um, and occasionally using the density formula as well. Um, it would be good to have the problem, uh, the worksheet printed out or pause the video before you see the answer to the problem and try to work it out yourself on a piece of paper. Um, have a calculator with you. Um, if you're actually in my class, you can turn to page 116 in your science booklet where there is the table of densities at the top of the page. We're going to need those densities to do some of the problems. If you don't have that worksheet, then just uh, look up the densities of the things as, as you need them. The first question is dealing with lead. So we're told a sample of lead has a mass of 52.63 grams. It's dropped into a graduated cylinder that has 17.2 milliliters of water. Will the lead sink or float in the water? Explain. Well, we know that water has a density of 1.00 grams per milliliter. And we can look up the density of lead. It's in our booklet on page 116. The density for lead is very high. It's 11.4 grams per cubic centimeter. So we can say since the density of the lead, which is 11.4 grams per cubic centimeter. Since the density for lead is greater than the density of water, which is only 1.00 grams per cubic centimeter at 20 degrees Celsius, um, the lead will float. Will, will sink rather. <laughs> it will definitely not float. The lead will sink in the water. If the density of the lead were less than the density of the water, then it would float. If the two densities were equal, we would, we would say that that's a neutrally buoyant substance, and that means that it would float if we place it on the top of the liquid, it would sink if we placed it, it would, it would stay at the bottom if we placed it at the bottom, it would stay wherever we placed it in the column of water. Uh, that's not something that we'll encounter very often. So what will be the final level of water in the cylinder? Well, we know that if it sinks, it's going to displace its own volume, water displacement. So what we need to know is the volume of the lead. If we know the volume, then we can simply add that to 17.2 to get the final level of the water. So here's the density calculation using a unit multiplier. If we take the mass, 52.2, 63 grams. So what I'm doing here is finding the volume of the lead. So I'm going to take 52.63 grams, the mass that was given, and I'm going to use the density as a unit multiplier. So we get rid of grams, and then we'll switch to cubic centimeters, or since cubic centimeters is the same as milliliters, we can simply say grams per mil like that. The density on the back of the solubility chart in the book, page 116, was 11.4 grams per cubic centimeter, so 11.4 grams per milliliter, or per cubic centimeter, and therefore the grams cancel, and we're going to be left with volume in milliliters, so we know we set that up correctly. If you left the volume as cubic centimeters, that's fine as well. Um, but just remember that a cubic centimeter is the same as a milliliter. So 52.63 grams divided by 11.4, keeping three significant digits. The density had three digits. We get 4.62 milliliters. So there's the volume of the lead. Now that's not the answer to the question. The question was what will be the final level of water in the cylinder? So since there was 17.2 mils of water, then we just dropped this piece of lead 4.62 mils into the water, and it sinks. The final level of the water would be 17.2 milliliters plus 4.62 milliliters. And we're going to round off now by adding or subtracting. We look at decimal places. So one decimal and two decimals, we're going to keep one decimal. So 17.2 plus, 
plus 4.62, 21.8, 21.8, 21.8 milliliters will be the final level of the water. Question 2. Pause the video if you want to try the question yourself. What's the mass of glycerin in a bottle with 3.78 liters of that liquid? We're going to need the density again, so look it up on your data booklet. Page 116 again in your science booklet. So that's 1.26 grams per cubic centimeter or grams per milliliter. All right, so what's the mass if we know we have 3.78 liters? So I'm going to take 3.78 liters. Now we have a problem because that unit, liters, doesn't match the unit of volume in my density, which was milliliter or cubic centimeter. So I'm going to use one unit multiplier to just switch from liters to cubic centimeters. Again, you could be using milliliters there if you prefer. We know that one liter has a thousand milliliters or a thousand cubic centimeters. And now that we've got the volume in cubic centimeters, we can use that density as a unit multiplier to get rid of cubic centimeters and convert to grams. There's 1.26 grams per cubic centimeter. That was the density of the glycerin. So 3.78 liters times 1,000 times 1.26. There's 4,762.8 grams. That's what my calculator says. Now, let's look at significant digits. We have three digits here and three digits here, so we keep three digits in that answer, so I'm going to switch it to scientific notation. 4.76 times 10 to the 3 grams. Now, if you wanted to switch it to kilograms, it would just be 4.76 kilograms. That would also be an acceptable answer. Question 3, if you want to pause the video and try it yourself, what volume in milliliters of methanol has a mass of 50.0 grams? You'll need the density of methanol from, the, from page 116 in your book. Okay, according to our book, the density of methanol is 0.79 grams per cubic centimeter. So I'm going to take that mass, 50.0 grams, and using the density as a unit multiplier, get rid of grams and convert to cubic centimeters. The density was 0.79 grams per cubic centimeter, so for one cubic centimeter. And therefore, with my calculator, 50 divided by 0.79, and keeping only uh, two digits. Okay, the calculator actually says 63.2911, etc., cubic centimeters, but we need to round that off to just two digits, so we'll say 63 cubic centimeters is the volume. Question number four What's the density of a cube whose mass is 10.42 grams? and whose edge is 1.63 inches long, express the answer in grams per cubic centimeter. Since we're going to want cubic centimeters, the first thing I'll do here is switch those inches to centimeters. So 1.63 inches with a unit multiplier, get rid of inches and convert to centimeters. So there's 2.54 centimeters per inch. So 1.63 times 2.54 is 4.14 centimeters. Now we know the, the cube, so we can say the volume is equal to S cubed is equal to 4.14 centimeters cubed. So the volume of the little cube is 4.14 times 4.14 times 4.14 
or just use the cube button on your calculator. 70.96, so I'm going to keep three digits. I'll say 71.0 cubic centimeters. Now the question was, what's the density? So when we're finding density, this is the only time that we're going to use the density formula. So density is mass divided by volume. The mass was 10.42 grams. The volume we just found was 71.0 cubic centimeters. And therefore, dividing 10.42 by 71.0, I get 0 0.147, 1.47 1 so 147, I'm going to keep three digits because there were three digits in the volume and four digits in the mass and we keep the smaller number of digits when dividing or multiplying so 0 0.147 grams per cubic centimeter is the density of that cube Last question on the sheet. A silver coin is dropped into a graduated cylinder that has 14.1 milliliters of water in it. The final level of the water is 16.9 milliliters. So right away I can see the um, difference here is going to be the uh, volume of the silver. Now one thing I should have mentioned was that the silver sinks. Okay, we can look up its density and see that it's greater than the density of water. And that allows us to subtract the volumes to get the volume of silver. What's the mass of silver in the coin? So the first thing I'll do is find the volume of the silver. It's 16.9 milliliters. Take away the original 14.1 milliliters. So the volume is... 2.8 milliliters. Okay, simple water displacement. Now we can use that volume to find the mass of silver. To do that, we're going to use a unit multiplier. So 2.8 milliliters. We'll get rid of milliliters, and we're using the density here to switch to grams. Looking at page 116, the density of silver is 10.49. Squeeze that in here. Density is 10.49 grams per cubic centimeter or grams per milliliter. Same thing. So down here, 10.49 grams for every milliliter. 2.8 times 10.49. This coin's mass is pretty heavy. It's going to be, we keep two digits, so it's going to be 29 grams of silver. Okay, we're keeping two digits because the volume had two digits. When multiplying or dividing, we keep the, the smaller number of significant digits in our answer. So there you have it. Practice using densities, um, using solving density problems rather, using unit multipliers almost always the one problem where we don't use the dense where we don't use unit multipliers is when finding density like in question four there we actually use the density formula but otherwise all of my answers are very clear the units are shown the unit multipliers are shown we, we paid attention to significant digits this would be something i'd be proud to hand in and i can clearly study from this as well that's the quality of the work that i want to see in your daily assignments as well as on tests.